How's it going everybody? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool abstract still life. We're going to be making a procedural cement material out there. That's not an image texture. That's all done with nodes. And we're going to be doing some really fun stuff and using the vertex weight proximity modifier to make this really cool displacement spot right here. If you want this project file, it is in the description for $1. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get all the project files for the tutorials, as well as exclusive tutorials. I show my client work. I just dropped a pack of 50 looping animations, all the project files for those animations. And I have the iridescent procedural material pack, the glitch pack, and I just released the procedural wood material pack. So if you want to get all that stuff, it's available in the description. All right, now let's get into how to create this. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a new file. All right, so I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna add in a torus. I'm gonna keep it at the uh, default, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna hit R, X, 90, flip it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And then I am going to take this guy and I'm going to subdivide him once. And then I'm gonna bring up the smoothness and I'm gonna subdivide it like that. So now we have this, I'm gonna shade smooth as well. So we have this guy. Let's go ahead and make that displacement happen where we want it. So what I'm going to do is add in a subdivision surface just to make everything really nice and dense for our displacement. And then I'm going to add the vertex weight proximity right here on fall off. I'm going to change this to uh, smooth and then on object, we're going to change it to geometry and then keep everything there. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to select the object that's going to tell the displacement where to be. So I'm going to hit shift A, we're going to go to an empty and I'm going to select a sphere. I'm going to hit G and just bring it right there, maybe scale it down a little bit. So this is where our uh, displacement is going to be affecting our torus. Now we need to click the torus, hit tab to go, and we need to make a vertex group. So we're going to do that. Make sure it's in edit mode, make sure that everything is selected. If you hit a face, just hit A, it selects everything back. And I'm going to go in here in vertex group, hit the plus icon and click assign, which assigns all these faces to the vertex group. Now let's go back here and I'm going to click vertex group, click the group, target object. We're going to click the empty. And then next thing we're going to do, add modifier. We're going to add in a displacement. We're going to select this vertex group right here. And you can see now it's working. I'm going to click new, click this little icon here and just get a simple clouds texture. You can get whatever texture you like. I'm going to do this and maybe make the scale something like that. Now let's go back to the vertex weight edit and you can see how if I bring up the strength or bring it down, you can, you can't really see much going on. You need to bring the highest down to zero and bring the lowest. Now you can play with it. Now it's acting the way we want. I'm going to bring my scale down on the displacement a little bit to maybe like right here. And then I'm going to maybe play with the scale of our displacement, something like that. Okay. This looks really good. I like it. Of course, you can play with it and add whatever you want. This is also a really cool animation. You can start at zero and it kind of grows out like that. It's super, super cool. So I'm going to keep it there. I like that. All right. So now let's make this procedural cement background with all these dots and stuff. It looks really industrial. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to mesh, plane, RX90, and then we'll just kind of push this guy back. I'm going to set up my camera. All right. I'm going to hit the tilde key and go to the front. I'm going to hit shift A, go to camera, control alt zero, snaps that to view, and I'm going to hit G to scroll it back a little bit. So this is just kind of setting up our scene um, to mess with our composition, trying to get it the way we want. And then I'm going to get another plane to make the floor. So I'm going to get a plane here, scale it up, bring it down to something like here. We'll play with the camera angle later, but I just want to set this up how I want it to be looking. So we'll scale everything up to be this control a apply scale on this one as well. Control a apply scale. Now let's click on this plane, go to the shading tab and let's start making that cement. So I'm going to hit this guy and hit H to hide him and we'll also hide that. So cement, how do we make it? Let's go to uh, new right here, make the base color down to something like a gray. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bump node right here. Plug the normal into the normal, and then I'm gonna get a Voronoi. Actually, first we need to get a color ramp to play with what's gonna be going behind it, which is going to be a Voronoi. So search V-O-R, Voronoi texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can hit Control T to apply it to apply a mapping and text coordinate, bring the object coordinate here and the distance to the color ramp. 
Now we have all this craziness and I want it to be straight up and down. So bring your randomness to this and I believe we'll bring the black portion. Actually, no, it'll be the white portion in. Now we have all of those circles. All right, so now we have all these circles, which is what we're looking for. Um, I'm gonna bring my keep my scale at five. Let's go ahead and add in the uh, boxes to make it look more like that cement industrial material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy, hit Shift D, duplicate him, bring the normal to the normal, and then let's get a brick texture. Brick texture right here, and I'm gonna bring this vector to the vector on the brick, and then plug the color ramp into the, I mean, and plug the brick texture into the height. So now we're gonna get this, which is not what we're looking for. I'm gonna keep the scale down to one, bring my offset to zero. I'm gonna make my mortar size 0.005 to make it look like that. My mortar scale at one, so we get now we get this stuff here. My brick, my row height be 0.5, and now we get these. Now you can see if you keep these numbers, if you keep it at one, and five, if you keep them at you know numbers like that, say we bring in a 10, it still maintains this, and say I make this three, it still maintains within those circles, which is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna keep this at one, and I'm gonna make this guy, maybe let's try two. How does that look in our scene? Not that good. So I'm gonna bring my scale like 0.5, I like that, and then we'll bring up my scale here, say, let's try five, that looks good. Now, last thing we need to do is add some detail within this thing, because right now it's just really, really smooth. And then we're gonna just do a simple um, Musgrave, so I'm gonna minimize this guy to keep him out of the way. Shift D, put the normal into the normal. We'll get a Musgrave, Musgrave texture, plug the factor into the height, and we'll get the vector here, plug that into the vector. And so now we're gonna make it really, really rough. So let's bring the dimension down to zero, the detail up, and then bring our strength down something like this. Now we have some nice roughness. It's very, very subtle, but it does go that extra mile to make it look like real cement. So here's how it looks here in cycles. What I'm gonna do is get my Voronoi texture here, put it at a scale of two, and then I wanna make these circles quite a bit smaller by crunching in on my color ramp. So now we get that nice industrial kind of looking cement, which is what I really like. And say I'm gonna get my uh, brick texture here and give it a scale of 0.2, maybe 0.4. I like the way that looks, that's looking good. All right, now let's make that really cool material on the torus. So let's go back to shading. I'm gonna go to material preview and I'm gonna click new. If you can't find your material within here, you hit period and brings it to the solid view, I mean the, the full frame view. I'm gonna get a color ramp here on my principal. Do that. We're gonna get a noise texture here. We're gonna hit control T to get our texture set up and use the object coordinate. So now you can see some stuff going on with the noise texture, but I wanted the noise texture to go in a circular pattern around. Right now it's just mapping it flat. And that's gonna be with a separate X, Y, Z. So separate. X, Y, Z, plug it there. Right now it's not gonna go the way I want. I believe it is the Z. Now it's gonna go around the way I want. Now to make it really sell that look on the color ramp, go from linear to constant, gives everything a hard edge. So now you can see it's acting that way. I'm gonna bring my detail up and I'm gonna bring my scale up until we get something that I'm really looking for. Maybe bring the detail down and bring that scale up really nicely. And now it's acting the way we want. What I'm gonna do is get my colors going. So I'm gonna bring this white one over here, get a new one. Let's say I'll make him red. I'm just gonna pick some random colors. I used a color palette when I originally designed this, so I would go ahead and just pick what kind of color palette you want. I'm gonna go with a nice navy blue. This is gonna be super, super random, but this is just sort of showing you how it's going to look in the end. So, terrible color selection, but you get the idea of what we're going for. So if you hit Z and then rendered view here in cycles, this is how we're looking so far. You can even bring up that scale some more to sell that very wiry look. If I zoom in here, you can see how it's kind of showing kind of a low poly look. You can just go in and bring up your viewport on the subsurf modifier and it kind of smooths everything out. Now I'm going to take, it, bring a bump node here and plug the noise texture into the height 
and now we're gonna get a little bit of bumping going on to add another extra layer of really cool, really nice detail within this. All right, now we're gonna make this water by simply adding a cool modifier called the wave modifier right here. Sorry, the ocean modifier. All right, now it's really, really big. We're just gonna scale it down until it fits the scene here. And then I'll bring up my uh, resolution until I like how it looks. Maybe bring up my choppiness, something like this. If you bring up the uh, bring up the random seed, you can change how the wave looks within your um, thing. Maybe I bring down my choppiness by a tad bit, and then bring it down. I'm going to change my camera view, so I'm going to bring it down like this. I'm going to hit R twice to scale it up. Now let's go back to rendered view, and give it a really nice metallic texture. Even though water isn't metallic, in this case, we want it to just be really cool and dark and very reflective. So making it a metallic texture kind of acts the way that I want it to look. So that's how we're getting this look, this design here. What I'm gonna do for composition is I'm gonna add in a new cube and then I'm gonna bring him over like this and then I'm going to scale him. We're gonna making, right now we're just making some simple architecture to complement the scene and make it look really nice. This part is completely up to you how you want your scene to look. Um, gonna scale him up like this. Shift A, apply scale. I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier. So we're gonna go right here with the bevel. And then I'm going to bring up my segments and then bring down like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna duplicate. Shift D, duplicate him. Bring him over here, and then I'm gonna make him much lower, kind of like that, just to bring your eyes in. It's really just composition, completely up to you. And then what I'm gonna do is apply the same texture over here. Also, I don't want them intersecting with uh, this guy, so I'm gonna bring it out, and then bring it out like this. And then I'm gonna apply this texture on these two things right here. All right, so I've applied the texture onto these two things. Now I'm gonna set up my lighting. Normally, <clears throat> I would use an HDRI, but this time we're gonna use a built-in HDRI, kind of we did in my last environment tutorial. So we're gonna go to the world, click this, and we're gonna go to a sky texture right here. And then I'm gonna switch on over to scene world, scene lights in my preview. And I'm gonna bring my strength up to 30. So it looks really good already. I wanna make it less blue, that's what this tur Bidity, or however that's supposed to be pronounced. I'm gonna change my sun direction so it's hitting it like this, which I really, really like. Bring it up, something like this, and then maybe bring it up to say 35 on the strength. On the water, I wanna make it more reflective, so I'm gonna give it a roughness of nothing, zero roughness. And then this looks just about finished. We are done with the scene. Now we just gotta go render it, so I'm gonna render it so I'm gonna render it here at 200 samples. It's a very um, bright scene, so you don't need a whole lot of sampling. Of course, you can pop up that sampling if it is uh, too noisy for you. And then that's it. You can go to render, render image, and you're done. So there you go. That's how you make this really cool scene. I would go in and change this color to whatever you like, play around with it, have some fun, and thank you guys for watching.